Answering Atheists, a Pure Talk series brought to you by PureFlix.com. I'm excited to be joined today by Dr. Jason Lyle. How are you? Good. So you are an astrophysicist and a scientist, mm -hmm. and you have a ministry. It's the Biblical Science Institute. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, it's to help uh, people see that science is not antagonistic to the Bible, but in fact, science is based on biblical principles. The reason we can do science is because God upholds the universe in a consistent fashion. And in fact, most of the founding fathers in various disciplines of science were devout Christians. And so there's sort of this common myth today that uh, you know, to, to be scientific is to be anti-Christian or vice versa, <laughs> and the, the ministry exists to, to counter that uh, propaganda. Well, it's interesting because when you interact with atheists um, on Twitter, which is a place I often are, am interacting with them, the first thing will say, well, I don't, I don't believe, you know, your myths. I believe science and a fact. You know, that is the argument. Um, it's a repeated argument. And then it becomes, I think, problematic when people encounter you, uh, you know, an intelligent scientist who is saying, there's no conflict. And so can you expand on that a little bit? Just this notion, they believe there's a conflict between believing in the Bible and science. Why is there not a conflict there? Well, one of the big things is a lot of what is touted to be science isn't. Uh, you know, people will claim, well, you know, the Darwinian idea of, ev of evolution, of microbes eventually becoming people, that's science. No, it's not. It's not testable. It's not repeatable in the present. Now, creation isn't either, but the difference is creation makes science possible. The fact that God created the universe and has instilled order into it and has created patterns for us to discover, uh, that's what science is. It's about uncovering the patterns that God has placed in nature. It's about uh, finding the consistent, repeatable way that God upholds his creation. That's, science is based on that, testability, repeatability. That wouldn't be possible if God uh, didn't uphold the universe in a consistent way for our benefit. He's promised us to do that in places like Genesis 8, 22, where he promises the basic seasons, the day and night cycle, the cycles of nature will be in the future as they have been in the past. And so we can rely upon that. But if it's a chance universe, why would you expect any of that? I mean, if it was just, if this was just a big bang, if we're just rearranged pond scum, then why would you expect that one accident could understand another accident? And so the principles of science are predicated on biblical creation. People say, well, I reject myths. Well, you believe in the Big Bang? Yeah, well, that's a myth. I mean, that's a, that's a myth about how the universe came to be. It's not something you can test and repeat in a laboratory. The idea of uh, that something like bacteria eventually evolved into people, that's a myth. It's not something you can repeat in a laboratory. Real science, testable, repeatable, observable science uh, is based on creation and is consistent with it. What barriers, if any, if any, have you hit, you know, in your ministry and in your career, balancing that world, which doesn't, it shouldn't be from a from a Christian perspective, hard to balance, because I think everything you've said is 100 percent true. As Christians, you know, science explains how God did it, and and you know, we can explore it that way. But what barriers have you encountered trying to, you know, work in that in maybe the secular world and the faith world when it comes to science? Well, I think the, there's there's no intellectual barrier because. As, as I've said, uh, science makes sense in the Christian worldview. I think the barriers are that people are not very educated on this issue. Uh, people have this misconception that science is somehow naturalistic or atheistic, and that's sort of the propaganda that, that the naturalists have been pushing, is that to be a scientist, you have to, be, you have to believe in naturalism, that nature's all that there is. So alleviating that misconception, I think, is the biggest barrier. And people are not well trained in logic, and that's something that I've kind of uh, I've realized that uh, the important uh, the importance of logic in trying to explain things uh, to people, and most people don't know logic, yeah. and so a big part of the Biblical Science Institute is teaching people logic, how to be rational. Uh, most people are not rational, and I don't mean I don't mean that to be mean. It's just it's just true. They don't teach it in schools anymore. And emotions tend to sometimes take over. Absolutely, yeah. People get very heated when you touch their worldview. It, it, it does matter whether or not you believe in God, and it affects the way you live your life. And if you have a particular lifestyle that you like, and God intervenes with that, well, then you, you're motivated. People are motivated to not believe in the biblical God and biblical creation in particular. You know, as a scientist, what what is the, and maybe there's more than one thing, but the most compelling, irrefutable evidence to you that there is a God who, create, who created all of us and created order? Mm. There are so many that are confirmatory of, of biblical creation. The, the fact that you know our DNA has instructions, you've got three billion base pairs times two sets of DNA, six billion base pairs, that's the instructions to make a U. It's pretty amazing. And it's encoded in a molecule, that's awesome. Or, the, or just the, the, the laws of nature, the fact that the universe obeys laws of nature. But I think the, 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 uh, the best one really is just the fact that science 
knowledge is possible. Uh, because if you think about that, if we're just a chance accident in nature, nature, how could we know anything? Uh, how could we trust that our own intellect is remotely reliable in terms of understanding truth and being able to discern truth from error and so on? Uh, if we're just an accident, it'd be like a magic eight ball. You know, those old magic eight balls where you'd shake it up and it would give you a random answer. Okay. Wouldn't it be ridiculous to trust in that? Because it's just chance. Now, if our brain is like that, it would be ridiculous to trust in any of our own conclusions. But if we're made in the image of God, if we have the capacity to be rational, if God made our senses and made them to be basically reliable and made the universe and made it to be understandable, then we'd expect, well, yeah, we can, we can know some things because we have a creator. And so I think the fact that knowledge is possible is, is the best argument really for God and, for, and not just any God, the biblical God. Yeah, you know, and th there's a question of proof. You know, atheists will say, well, there's no proof and you can't prove it. And, and if you have creation and you believe there's a God who created it, well, then who created God? You know, that's always like they try to have this gotcha of who created God. Mm -hmm. And obviously, we don't have answers to some of those things. But at the, at the base level, it would seem to me when you look at all of the things, and I'm not a scientist, okay? I'm a trained journalist. That's what I've done. But when you look at reality, plants, life around us, the fact that humans have knowledge to build structures like the ark, um, and, and you take that all into account, the natural logical thing is, well, somebody has to create something. Somebody created that ark. Something had to have made all of this. You know, that's like the base to me of logic. Why do so many reject that, though? Well, it interferes with the way they want to live. And you know, I, I would actually say that the Christian faith is provable. A lot of people uh, separate from me on that issue. But uh, you know, in Romans 1.20, God indicates that there is no excuse for disbelief in him. No excuse. And the way it's worded in Greek is interesting. No, it's anapologia, meaning they have no defense. And that tells me that, that we can know with absolute certainty. Let, let, all, let all the house of Israel know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. We can know for certain the Christian worldview. People say, oh, but I'm not persuaded. Well, that's, a, that's an entirely different issue. <laughs> just because somebody, you know, just because you're not persuaded doesn't mean that I haven't proven something. I mean, I can